In this video, we will learn to model cash dividends using our now familiar three statement model. Cash dividends represent a portion of a corporation's net income paid to shareholders. This can be a one time dividend, also known as a special dividend, or a consistent quarterly dividend. Whenever a cash dividend is paid, it will be reflected on the balance sheet by a decrease in cash because it represents a cash outflow and by a decrease in retained earnings. The cash outflow is captured on the cash flow statement under cash flow from financing activities. It follows that to include cash dividends in our model, we only need to make two changes, which you will see on this tab titled Dividend Intro V1. On the right-hand side, I have a column labeled comments so that the changes can be easily identified. Step one is to add a line under cash flow from financing activities to reflect the payment of a cash dividend. So in row 96, you'll notice a new line item labeled cash dividends paid. And of course, recall that anytime you add a line item, make sure that it's included in your total. And with that done, we can move on to step two, which is to reduce retained earnings by cash dividends paid. So let's scroll back over so we can see the line items on the balance sheet. And you'll notice that the formula for retained earnings is now retained earnings in the previous period, plus net income, which is cell H28, plus cash dividends paid, which is cell H96. And pay special attention to the fact that we're adding cash dividends back because it's a cash outflow on the cash flow statement. So much like capital expenditures or repayment of principal, cash dividends should be entered as a negative number. And the reason we don't have to make a change to cash on the balance sheet is that it is automatically reduced because we have a direct link between net cash flow in the period, which has now been reduced by the amount of the cash dividend, and cash on the balance sheet. Cash in period one links to cell H101. So press control, open bracket, and you'll see that cell H101 is your ending cash balance, which includes the cash dividend. Journal entries might also be helpful here. When a dividend is declared, you debit retained earnings and credit dividends payable. Then later when the dividend is paid, you debit dividends payable and credit cash. And in our financial model, we will assume that the dividend is declared and paid in the same period, and therefore we only concern ourselves with the impact on cash and retained earnings. So that covers the changes required to record a cash dividend on the primary financial statements. But notice that our ending cash balance is now $1,800,000. Even though our line of credit calculation includes a minimum cash balance of $2 million. The issue is that we haven't updated the calculation for free cash flow from financing before the line of credit. To make this adjustment, select the relevant cell, press F2, and then we will use the sum function to include the cash dividend. Select the projected period and paste this across with control R. And with that fix, you will notice that our ending cash balance once again matches the minimum cash balance when we draw down the revolver. And before we move on to the second tab, keep in mind that all of the changes made here will transfer to the tab titled Dividend Intro V2. Now, as we've seen before, this is not ideal because cash dividends are projected as an input that must be evaluated and potentially modified each time we make a change. To establish a relationship that will cause this line item to respond dynamically to relevant changes in the model, we can move on to the next tab where we've also included a supporting schedule for cash dividends. Much like the previous tab, here again I have a column labeled comments, which we can use to quickly identify the steps required to make these changes. And here we are at the bottom of the bottle where we've added a new supporting schedule. It's a simple schedule with three line items, 
and the steps are pretty easy to follow. The first step is to build the schedule, which includes formatting and typing out the line items. Next, link to net income on the income statement. Then develop a dividend payout ratio assumption. And here we're using 10%, which can be used to calculate cash dividends. Cash dividends are calculated by multiplying net income by the dividend payout ratio. Recall that earlier in this video, we defined cash dividends as the portion of a corporation's net income paid to shareholders. The dividend payout ratio simply defines what that portion is. The final step is to now link cash dividends to the cash flow statement. Whereas previously we had an input, now we have a link to our supporting schedule. And in this way, cash dividends will always represent 10% of net income. Now keep in mind that this is building on the previous tab. So while we don't list it as a step, retained earnings is still reduced by the amount of the cash dividend paid in that period. And now before I let you go, there's one last thing I'd like to cover. In this template, we don't have a history of dividends. But if you were working with a different company that did have a history of paying dividends, you might take a slightly different approach. Instead of developing an assumption for the dividend payout ratio, you could use net income and cash dividends to determine what the dividend payout ratio has been historically, and then use those values to develop an assumption for the projected period. Now keep in mind that this schedule does not link to the model above. It's just an example. But I wanted to provide it in case you ever work with a company that has a history of paying dividends, which is quite common. All right, team, that's it for now. Hope it was helpful. Before moving on to the next video, be sure to download the notes.